Hi everyone, it's Chat Bob with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about AMD, of course, which is a company known to many, fabulous semiconductor manufacturer that produces the Radeon graphics cards and the Ryzen chips. They have a, the majority of the revenue is from data center gaming and embedded segments. They're now a $93 billion company, having come down a whopping 61% just in this year alone. Tremendous losses for in part for because of a wider decline, a quite high valuation at its high, but we're currently looking at it at just shy of $58, pretty much on its 52-week low with the lowest PE ratios we've seen to this company for a long time. And I want to analyze, is this stock, is it, is it all as bad as it seems? Is the recent bad news that came out, I'm going to talk in a minute, is that the end of the world right now? And does this is this kind of deserved, this loss in the stock price? Or is this simply an opportunity for long-term investors who want to pick up AMD at a reasonable price. Last week, AMD stock lost 13% in a single day, and of course a wider down day for the market also, but 13% nevertheless is quite a big loss. That was basically because they announced their preliminary third quarter results, and they expect third quarter revenue to be around $5.6 billion, which is an increase of 29% year over year, but they were previously expecting to increase to 55%. So we're looking at around almost a billion dollars of, of miss, essentially, because they're just a tougher macroeconomic environment. They're also expecting gross margins to be around 42%, whereas they were previously expecting 50, and it's normally around, it's normally higher than 50, above 54, and they're expecting operating expenses to go up to $2.4 billion, where they were previously expecting $1.5 billion. So all in all, it's nice to know in the, in the near term that these things are happening and not be surprised in results, but these are these are poor, and we are seeing it for the wider semiconductor industry. Nvidia is struggling, obviously Intel has its struggles, but this is something to be concerned about for sure. The CEO of AMD, Dr. Lisa Su, announced in this statement that this was basically due to a weakening in the PC market. We'll look at the numbers in a minute. She believes that their product portfolio remains very strong, but macroeconomic conditions drove lower than expected PC demand, and they have a significant inventory correction across the PC supply chain. These are tough market conditions. I don't think that's an, a surprise to anyone. And the PC market has weakened, which in the long term for AMD is not really going to make a difference to the long term story of this business, in my opinion. They believe their data center embedded and gaming segments have shown continued strength and show the strength of the diversified business model and balance sheet. So the headline is, a couple of months ago, $6.7 billion of revenues expected, plus or minus $200 million. This is now $5.6 billion as of the preliminary results. Of course, there is going to be some, some a margin of error here. Gross margin is decreasing by around 4% and operating expenses are going up. To give you an idea of where the pain is, the client segment is essentially the P6 segment. This is down 53% quarter over quarter. Last quarter, around $2.2 billion in revenue. This quarter, one billion. That's an absolutely terrific down downturn. It's basically the cause of all the pain in this business. The overall business is down around one point one billion. That is basically the client segment. Now, further problems are that growth generally is just slowing down a bit. Data center segment, which has been the lion's share of the growth for this business for a long time, consistently grew at a much faster rate than the client segment. As as of the most recent quarter, is going to be the large segment of the business. It was up eight percent. A quarter of a quarter, up 45% year over year. The gaming segment is predicted to be about flat and year over year up around 14%. Again, $1.6 billion, around the same as the data center, or the data center is growing at a much faster rate. The embedded segment is predicted to come in at $1.3 billion of revenue, up 4% quarter of a quarter, up 1,549% year over year. Of course, this is due to the Xi Linux um, acquisition mostly, so this is kind of a fake year over year growth number because they it was a huge acquisition, so I'm not really going to give them so much credit for growing that segment that much. Overall, $5.6 billion, down 15% quarter over quarter, but still up 29% year over year. So reasonable results a year on a year over year basis to add some perspective to this. This is still a significantly stronger business than it was this time last year. Looking at the valuation and margin profile for this business, this is typically a company that trades um, very high premiums to S&P 500 because it's been growing revenue and earnings at a very consistent rate. And it has a good margin profile, 48% gross margin. In addition to secular tailwinds, that is 48% gross margin. This is typically in the above 50% range on an on gap basis, around 15% net margins. These are both pretty strong for the industry and very good for AMD's historical comparisons. I will note that I'm a very big fan of the management of this company. I think Lee Su is one of the best business operators around, one of the best CEOs, in, in certainly in this industry. 
Return on equity percentage, while it is getting better for AMD's history, is still not absolutely amazing. 12% is not particularly impressive. Return on assets, again, this is a relatively asset-like business, being a fab fabulous semiconductor manufacturer, so they don't have to deal with large capex, for example, like TSM. They farm out to TSM. Return on invested capital around 12% is pretty good. Again, not absolutely incredible. On a valuation point of view, this is pretty much the cheapest AMD has been for a very long time. Price to earnings ratio on a, on a trailing basis of 24. That's very, very cheap for AMD's history. Not spectacularly cheap for the industry, but a lot of the industry isn't growing at the same rate as AMD. As this takes into account things like Intel and TSM. On a forward basis, this just simply isn't true at the minute because as we're seeing from, they're currently going to be guiding this down. I'm expecting this to be trading around around the market, probably around a P, around 16 and 17 on a forward basis, judging by the lowered gross margin. Bear in mind, I think this company should be trading at significant premium to the market. So trading at market valuation to me is pretty decent. Price free cash flow around 23 is not particularly cheap in my opinion. I would prefer it to be under 20. So maybe the, the an element of this has got a bit still got a bit to go in terms of drop dropping down in price. But a price of 58 is pretty much the cheapest AMD's been for a while on the by these metrics. Perhaps a minor weakness for this company is that its balance sheet isn't absolutely perfect. They have a cash debt ratio of 1.87, and right now they have around $6 billion in cash on the balance sheet and around just over $3 billion in debt. This isn't perfect by any means, but they produce enough free cash for them. I'm not overly concerned about it. And also, their acquisition of Xilinx is looking to be an absolute masterstroke recently. They used their own shares when they were well over $100. So that, that, that at the time, it looked like a pretty expensive price to pay, like $40 billion. But now... <laughs> that looks completely sensible using your own shares as currency rather than cash. The debt to EBITDA and debt to equity are reasonable numbers and okay for AMD's history. And the interest coverage is very, very well covered by EBIT. So I'm not overly concerned about this company at all. That very high interest coverage pretty much relieved any any doubts I had over the debt. And this is why it's given an almost cover around five, indicating it's safe from near-term financial distress. This is a reasonable balance sheet. I would prefer it to be higher, but again, this is a relatively asset-like business. So it doesn't need tons and tons of cash. Most of its cash goes into R&D. Next time to do a discounted-free cash flow analysis to work out for valuation for this business based on some of its future cash flows. Now, there is, of course, with any DCF, there is an element of projection here. It's not had consistent free cash flow numbers going back 10 or five years. But they've recently became free cash flow positive on a consistent basis, and they've been growing it in the last, well in the last year they grew it over twenty percent, but it's been growing at a decent rate, and I believe they will continue this going forward as this seems to be what they are desiring. Over the last five years, the business has grew at eighteen point three percent on a revenue basis, and the last ten years, well, you've got to take into account that earlier on in those ten years, this is not a business performing particularly well, but right recently they've been rolling on all cylinders. In my opinion, I don't think it's unrealistic whatsoever that this company could grow free cash flow at around 15% average over the next 10 years. I think it's in a really good position with long-term secular tailwinds and is winning the battle for sure against the likes of Intel. And he's riding riding these tailwinds in things like data, in data centers, in, in, in embedded, and in gaming. These are long-term secular tailwinds that are only going to benefit this business. I think 15% is completely realistic. If you're wanting a more conservative number, perhaps 8, eight to 12, then this may not be a fair, fair value right now. Using that 15% free cash flow growth number, 4% terminal stage, and 9% discount rate for the long-term returns the stock market, that gives a fair valuation right now of $65 there or thereabouts, compared to a present-day stock price of around 57 I mean, this company is relatively relatively fair value now it's trading below, below its fair value and i'm not going to say it's an absolute screaming bargain but the this valuation seems fair to me it's my opinion that this is very much just a bump in the road for amd if you look in say q3 2022 comes in at 5.6 billion dollars as expected that will still be doubling revenue on a quarterly basis over the last two years q3 2020 they had 2.8 billion dollars in revenue so even with a significant downturn in the the client segment this is a company that's trading a p on a trailing basis around 20 and on a forward basis probably around 18 to 20 and it's just doubled the revenue in the last two years and it had long-term secular tailwinds and 40 to 50% gross margin. This seems like an absolute no-brainer to me in terms of strength of the business. I no longer believe that semiconductors are as cyclical as they once they once were. It used to be based on PC upgrade cycles and iPhone upgrade cycles if we're being honest. 
Now, data centers are not going anywhere. The, the cloud is only going to grow. Uh, game, gaming is not really going anywhere. People continue to upgrade PCs regularly. I think there's plenty of room for this company to no longer be cyclical, no longer have really lumpy revenue over, over the medium term. I think this is a company that can continue to grow its revenue at a strong rate, and I think free cash flow will grow in line with that. Overall, I think it's pretty obvious that AMD is a fantastic company. It really is just a question of the price. And while it's at its 52-week lows, it isn't exactly a screaming bargain because of the problems that are coming on in the next one to two years to this company. There are significant macroeconomic headwinds. However, for the long-term investor, I believe this is a re relatively fair price for this company. If you believe that it can grow between 13 and 15% free cash flow over the next 10 years, then this is fair value by a DCF. If you don't believe that then, then this company is not fair value and that's simply what you have to what you have to bet on with, with a company like this it isn't an absolute nailed on fact that this company is going to continue to grow forever but it has long-term secular tailwinds it is significantly smaller than it was 12 months ago i believe that this is a company that could easily hit 100 dollars in the next two to three years so that at this price and uh, with this margin safety i'm very happy to start investing in amd I'd be interested to hear what you think of the stock below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the videos. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor, so you should not take any of this as financial advice. Do your own research and due diligence. Not just buy because I'm buying because I think it's a great stock. Buy because you think it's a great stock. Let me know what you think down below. See you again next time.